Going on Jerome's raw, real parking lot rant, sitting here waiting for the pickup. That's how we do, man. So I don't know, like I, I feel like the Vikings are the team that is always so close. And you see all the records, right? We're highest winning percentage of any franchise in NFL history without a Super Bowl win. And it's tough. Again, we've said historically would have been better just to be like the Browns or the Jets or the Giants or, well, the Giants since 2011 or the Lions historically where it's just like flatline, boop, no expectations every single year. But the Vikings getting your hopes up. 0-4 in the Super Bowl, NFC title games. Every single year, here we go. But, you know, honest question, are the Vikings close to a Super Bowl? And I know that the people who want the team to tank say obviously no. I know that, uh, you know, positive people like me generally say maybe. <laughs> That's the thing, too. But I, I understand that maybe the best thing for the Vikings to do would be get rid of everyone, tear it down to the studs uh, and rebuild and rise like a phoenix you know try and lose all your games on purpose which the cardinals are doing by the way uh and and then just rebuild around your quarterback that you take at one right but reality has to set in is that the wilfs ownership would never allow that no they wouldn't like they they want this team to be competitive they're not going to take a year off they, they were very dismayed uh, by the the 2011 season when the Vikings went three and 13, and th they're not going to accept that. You know, just like you know they, they went 13 and four last year. That did buy Kevin O'Connell and Quasi Dofamensa some time. And also, I, I know a lot of people want Quasi fired. I know a lot of people want maybe Kevin O'Connell on the uh, not the hot seat but the warm seat. But ownership is very unlikely to fire those guys have to hire a new gm a new head coach a new staff so uh since uh, they're still paying spielman and zimmer for one more year they'd be paying three gms three head coaches three coaching staffs it's not gonna happen right so and, and also i i do think that quasi and kevin o'connell deserve uh, another season just to see what happens and they got to start hitting man and i, I know that ooh, we as humans like simple answers to things. And if there was a direct correlation between, hey, just lose our games, get the top pick, and then all of a sudden you'll start winning Super Bowls. If it was that simplistic, I'd be all in. But it's not. And the Vikings, they have some tough decisions. Like, is an extension going to get done with Justin Jefferson? And we've said it's not about the money with JJ. I mean, the money is there. The Vikings would be stupid not to offer it. But Jefferson wants to know who his quarterback is going to be. And then do the Vikings roll with Kirk Cousins for another year or two? Uh, and also, if they do extend Kirk, uh, how does that affect the salary cap? Even though harsh sure, covers them up. Uh, does that preclude them from bringing back Daniil Hunter? who since he has a no tag clause, the Vikings essentially would be giving up Daniil in free agency for a 2025 third round compensatory pick, basically, uh, if they don't extend him. And I mean, the Hawkinson extension is not looking great right now. It honestly feels like, well, like we've seen Hawkinson be that dude. Hawkinson be a top three tight end and not three. I mean, we saw it last year in purple, but it, it just seems like there's like a, like a mental block going on with him where it, it almost seems like he expects bad things to happen. And that's no bueno. No, we need a confident Hawk back and he's gonna, he has to get things done. And, you know, the question with Kirk, uh, it, it's, it's clear that ownership, first off, signed off on Kirk when they signed him as a free agent in 2018. It, it's clear that they love him. Uh, they, they think that there's stability there. And stability, you know, means profits. I mean, that that's what uh, it comes down to. And I don't blame them. That's just how uh, the businesses work. And they're, I mean, they're rolling the dice uh, if they do uh, draft a quarterback. Now, you could hit the lotto, but you could also break out. And it doesn't matter if it's Caleb Williams, Drake May, Penix, uh, Nix, um, McCarthy, or whoever. Ewers, sure. Uh, and they've seen, like, Christian Ponder, 2011. Unfortunately, Teddy Bridgewater, uh, 2014. Although Teddy would have been something, except his leg fell off. And then you got the stability in Kirk Cousins. And the Vikings have had decent quarterback play the last couple of years. But I understand, and it's a saying that we use a lot in life, don't let good be the enemy of great. And even though Kirk Cousins is playing some quality ball, 
uh, absent trying to throw the ball backwards to Cam Akers. Mm. Sometimes you got to make a change. And I've always said Kirk Cousins is not a Super Bowl uh, win, uh, not a quarterback you win a Super Bowl because of, but he's a quarterback that you can win a Super Bowl with. And I, I think that Quasey, as well as the last couple years of Rick Spielman, they've been missing too much on depth pieces. And you saw in preseason where the Vikings in the trenches, well, first, second, third team defensive line is FUBAR. Uh, second and third team O-line was garbage. And you know, a lot of people blame Quasey, but Quasey inherited a very flawed team. I mean, it, it was top heavy with uh, Jefferson and Derisaw and Daniil and Harrison Smith, uh, etc. But I mean, the rest of the team was rather deficient. And that's what happens when you're not consistently hitting on your mid to late round picks. I mean, you remember that famous third round from a couple of years ago where it was Chasserat, Kellamon, Y. Davis, and Patrick Jones second. Only one of those four guys are still on the team, and Patrick Jones is a backup. All right, so teams that, whereas you look at the Niners, um, you know, Warner was a third round pick, Kittle was a fifth round pick, uh, Hufungo was a fifth round pick. So they're hitting on studs uh, in the mid to late rounds. And everyone makes a big uh, hoopla to do about hitting on the top picks. I mean, the Niners traded up for Trey Lance at three. Solomon Thomas was, well, he was at three and then it was at two. Uh, but they, they bricked on both of those and they still built out the roster. And yeah, uh, great trades for Trent Williams for basically nothing, which the Vikings should have uh, made a deal on. But also if they traded for Trent Williams, maybe they don't have a Derrissaw, whatever. Uh, and also McCaffrey. And then you finding Brock Purdy in the back end of the seventh round. Sure, that all helps. But the rest of the roster is because John Lynch has hit on these mid to late round picks. And Quasey needs to take some lessons from his former mentor, man. And it's not something that's going to be fixed overnight. But a lot of the issues has been the Vikings defensive line where the line of scrimmage has been reset, can't keep the linebackers clean, and everything like that. They, they got to get back to having the meets up front, whether it's the Williams wall adjacent. Uh, Daniel Hunter still needs to stick around and be a part of that. And here's the thing, too. The offensive line has actually been pretty decent this year. I, I know, like, the analytics potentially overrate them. but And also, people say, oh, I mean, they ignored the offensive line. Darisol was a first-round pick. Bradbury was a first-round pick. Ezra, Ed Ingram, O'Neal, all second round picks. So they're investing in it and signing Dalton Riser for four million bucks. But it really does start and end with that front seven. And the Vikings, they have the makings of a good offensive line. They have to seek out their quarterback of the future. Maybe they're running back with Kirk for another year too. And also here's the thing too. If they extend Kirk, that doesn't preclude them from drafting a quarterback in the first or second round. It just doesn't. It doesn't, man. Uh, but they, they got to do something. And I'm starting to worry about Kevin O'Connell. Um, it, it just feels like there's a lack of rhythm and play calling and also mistakes being made in game management. And I think given his lack of experience in both, him trying to do both at the same time, th there's issues there. And I mean, last year, the, the issues were there too, except it was covered up by winning winning, uh, because winning is the cologne that covers up a lot of stink. It's the Dracar Nar. But now it's being pretty obvious that he's being outcoached at times. The Vikings are not coached up in situational football. They make mistakes. The, the you know, Getting the play call in just seems like it's taking way too long. And I think that Kevin O'Connell does need to you know, set the ego aside and give that up. I think that he needs to let Wes Phillips call the plays. And I think that he needs to take all of his bandwidth into managing the game. So what he needs to do, man. So uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. But l like we said, I mean, the Vikings are two and four and there's four losses. The Vikings should have easily won, including against the Chargers, including against the Chiefs and the Eagles, were the, who were the Super Bowl participants last year. So all is not lost. And this team continually beats themselves. And it feels like they're mentally soft at times. And that's what sucks. Like, it's not really a talent issue with the Vikings. And they're a, a clown's far away from being four and two, five and one. And, you know, this Monday night showdown against the Niners would be a huge deal. But now it's seen as, as this massive upset if the Vikings win, which I think that they will. So we'll see, man. But it, it's just so frustrating. It's, it's so frustrating because uh, it, it's, it's almost like fancy football, where if you have a, a bad roster, that's whatever. But if you could have won, if you would have set your lineup differently, that's what frustrates you the most. Again, it's not a talent issue. All the pieces are there. You just can't get them in the right order. That, that's what seems like the Vikings forever.
Anyways, that's it. Raw, real, car rant. You guys are the best. Skull, no production value.